2010 Ultimate Builder Custom Bike Show in Seattle, Washington. We're talking with Ryan Anderson. Let's take a minute, Ryan. Uh, tell us about your background. I uh, work primarily in technology, so this is where I get my uh, off time, is spending it in the garage, being a little bit of a garage rat. Understand you uh, self-taught everything including paint except chrome, is that right? Indeed, yeah. I've been in the industry doing uh, custom cars, imports and such for a number of years, but this is the first time I've taken on a bike and first time I've done welding, paint work, body work, uh, any major fabrication like this. So literally learned how to weld doing this, doing this project. Let's start from the beginning. Uh, what were you trying to accomplish with this build? Being that it was a, a newer bike, it's an 06, I wanted to really take old school feel to it. Uh, do something that was not done before. Uh, I've seen a lot of flames, a lot of skulls, a lot of bones, uh, but I've never seen uh, Argyle done. So I figured to give this a shot and, and see how it turned out. What was the vision for your bike? Uh, definitely taking old school, uh, just with a lot of modern pieces to it. To, like I said, it's an 06, so a very new bike, uh, but really wanted to give an old school feel to it while really maintaining a, a Roadstar feel to it as well. So Roadstar owners know it's a, a Roadstar, not a full custom. Uh, what was your inspiration for this cycle? Uh, really just challenging myself. Uh, could I really learn something new? Um, and try and be as self-taught as possible. I obviously had some good friends helping me with some key aspects uh, with paint and modifications and fabrication. Uh, but as far as the actual work goes, it was just a challenge uh, to myself. Can I, can I pull off my vision that I drew up a couple years ago? Uh, let's talk about the fabrication. Uh, can you walk us through that, please? Sure, the, uh, let's start from the rear end. Uh, wanting to get the fender as low on the tire as possible, uh, but without going to an air suspension, we modified the uh, swing arm to actually carry the fender, so everything uh, works in unison. Uh, so we're able to keep about a half inch of clearance underneath the fender itself, keep that nice and low. Uh, that led into the completely uh, encasing the rear axle to clean up that whole area. Keeping the lines clean, moving forward into the frame, we rebuilt the entire rear end of the frame to allow for it to be all open and then fabricated the plate to cover all the electronics. Um, then came the seat, that's actually the second edition of the seat brace. Uh, it's been done a couple of different times, all the way from starting underneath the gas tank and having it sit solo, but this actually worked out to give me full suspension. Uh, on up through shaving the gas tank and keeping everything clean there. Same with uh, molding in all of the welds. And then uh, finally on the front fender, keeping the stock front fender as well to match the rear but mounting it so it sits very low on the tire and uh, re redoing the entire tab system. Uh, the handlebars are completely one-off. Uh, they were off the shelf but modified in three different places to make them narrow uh, as well as uh, affected the turn, uh, the pullback on them. Uh, all the way down to the riser. The riser is actually off a of Harley but had to be modified a quarter inch just to fit on a uh, metric. Uh, let's talk about the engine. What enhancements do we see on the engine? Uh, nothing internally. That was the literally the only thing that we didn't touch on the bike was internal engines. So there's no performance modifications on it other than breathing. Uh, we went to a, a velocity stack to give it a, again the old school feel and just straight pipes off the back. Uh, but other than that, everything went to detailing. So keeping it to the point of clean where you can pretty much eat off of it. So not letting it get dirty. Uh, if there's any drop of grease or anything, it just, it's quickly cleaned up. So making it clean and uh, presentable and shiny was the best we could do with it. Uh, the front end, you talked about that, is the basic front end stock other than the way you set up the fender? It is. Uh, with the exception of the wheel, uh, everything up front is stock. That's actually a Yamaha tire, uh, or at least the uh, OEMs that come with Yamaha. Uh, but the rotor is, uh, actually take it back, the rotor is actually aftermarket just because we went to a different wheel. But it is a, uh, a stock fender that we uh, fabricated the uh, tabs on the side to remount uh, to a Roadstar uh, front end. So everything's bolted the same way. Uh, just sits much closer to the uh, tire than, than originally planned for. Let's talk about the paint job. A paint job that looks simple like that is far from simple, correct? That's exactly it. Uh, I, I have a, a way of trying to go with a simple plan and having it turn out to be the worst plan ever. Uh, as far as doing Argyle, again, wanted to go with the old school look to it, thinking, hey, straight lines, those should be easy enough. Uh, absolutely not. This uh, paint job has been the bane of uh, myself for, for many, many long hours in the garage, and then uh, in a couple of cases of taking it to a pinstriper, and they've had fun with it as well, thinking again, oh, that should be no problem, just a couple of straight stripes, and that turns out to be a much bigger problem. So it, it's, uh, it's been fun, and it, it turned out 
perfect to, my, to, to what my vision was on it, uh, but it certainly is uh, interesting when we have to make small repairs to it. So basically, the um, what what would have been the um, the most challenging aspect, doing the pinstriping on it? The striping was a little more difficult just because you have a, a lower tolerance for, uh, for mistake, uh, but lining up the, the, the bigger diamonds front to back uh, and then trying to align them so they line up somewhat in form on the frame, on the gas tank, uh, on, underneath it even, and then having it line up so it looks okay with the front as well. So making sure everything lines up so you don't have a, an off diamond in an off place, it's a lot of metri uh, measuring that goes into it just so your geometry is right and straight. It looks better in the sketch then, doesn't it? Much simpler. Yeah, <laughs> with a ruler, it's much easier to do. <laughs> uh, where did your inspiration come from on the paint? Uh, a couple of things, uh, just doing the old school, uh, something that it, it's an older color, it's actually off of a, a Jaguar, uh, but we we're trying to go with an older color that would complement another build that's being done for my wife for a vehicle that's gonna go with the same color. So we needed a vintage color uh, that we both agreed on, which can be sometimes a challenge, uh, but uh, wanted something that wasn't a, a bright neon, wasn't um, you know a, a candy. It was just something that you know was a little bit uh, more unique and, and not really seen out there as far as like a, a frosty blue. Which companies were instrumental in getting your bike finished? Uh, a couple of them. Uh, most of the chromium was done through a company called Action Plating here in Washington. Uh, some paint work was, uh, second wave of paint work was done through uh, Brand X Customs in Linwood, Washington. Uh, suspension work done with uh, the drop shop in uh, Snohomish. That's, uh, those are pretty much the partners I dealt with uh, to get everything done as far as the things I couldn't do in my garage. Anybody you'd like to thank? Uh, huge thanks go to uh, Mr. Rob Schultz who uh, inspired me to do all this and has uh, definitely been the, the one to help me out in a pinch. A lot of phone calls late, late at night. Uh, second uh, big help would go to, as far as actual work goes, to uh, uh, my wife, obviously, uh, and children for, for their patience and such. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, again, a uh, good, good friend of mine, uh, Dan Riviera, who also helped a great deal with paint, uh, was my inspiration in the paint booth and helped me build it up, make sure I got it laid down uh, the right way. So big, big thanks to those two bikers and the family. Thank you, Ryan. My pleasure. Thank you.